I've reached the stage where I am overwhelmed with scrap fabric again. I do keep pretty much every piece, so there are some really small pieces in this collection, but they're all treasures. There are so many beautiful Liberty prints that can be used to make something lovely. So for today's project, I've decided to pick out pieces that are all of a similar colour story, so pinks and greens and blues. And then I'm going to pick out some that have white backgrounds as well, so it adds a bit of contrast. I bought these wooden bag handles about three years ago on Etsy, so if you're looking for something similar, just search wooden bag handles and look on Etsy as well and you might find the same thing. But I'm going to use them today and finally make the bag that I've been dreaming about. It will be a lovely scrappy Liberty bag and I think I'm going to use it to store my crochet in it. So first things first, getting the fabric ready. It all needs a really good press. Next I'm sorting them out into strips that are already cut nicely or ones that need squaring off. I'm not making them any particular size, I'm just cutting them all down to be rectangles or squares. Next I found a scrap piece of wadding and I put the bag handle at the top and I'm just using it as a guide to roughly just draw out the kind of shape that I want to have for my bag just so I can get an idea of how big it's going to be and how many scraps it will need. And then just as a guide I decided to place some on just to get an idea of the kind of arrangement that I wanted to create. it was time to start sewing them together so I did this by machine for speed but you could definitely do it by hand and it would be a really nice relaxing project but all I did was sew two pieces right sides together and then I trimmed it down if it didn't quite fit and then I added more and I made little blocks that I eventually joined together. So once I'd made some little blocks, I joined them together with other ones to make them slightly bigger and trimmed them down to make them match. And then I just made various different ones and played around with it until they kind of fit together. So I went on to make two panels, one for the front of the bag and one for the back. And as you can see here, I've made it in sections and I decided how I was going to join them together and how I'd trim them off. So that one, those two will join together and I'll trim off the right hand side of the larger one. Then they'll join to that one and then I'll put the strip along the bottom. So I just built up the panel in that kind of way and I was realising here I needed something else down there first. And then I decided to put a strip across the top. So that's how I sort of jigsawed it together if you like. So once each panel was complete it was time to make a quilt sandwich so I had some backing fabric, I chose this lovely Liberty that I've been saving for a special project, I had my wadding and I just created a quilt sandwich and pinned everything in place. I 
decided to hand quilt both panels and after a lot of deliberation on colour I went with this lovely shade of pink and it is the fruity 12 weight thread made by Wonderful Specialty Threads. This is my absolute favourite for big stitch hand quilting and of course I'm using my new thimble that I got from Festival of Quilts. So I'm just making sure my knot is at the end between the layers and then I just did some really simple running stitch, big stitch, quilting stitches and I just did them about an eighth to a quarter of an inch away from the seam lines of most of the patches. I didn't keep it consistent, I just did a little bit here and there and I wish I'd had more time to have done more quilting because as you know it's the hand stitching that I really enjoy but it's the summer holidays and time is of the essence at the moment so I just did what I could. So this is what it looked like after quilting and even though I wish I could have done more it actually turned out really nice and it looked good on the back too. So once both panels had been quilted I then made my pattern template, I used some interfacing and just drew the shape that I wanted. I placed that on top of my panel and then drew around it as a stitching line because I wanted to make sure that I sewed directly on that line to secure all the quilting stitches before cutting the shape. So after stitching I cut it out leaving half an inch seam allowance. added the bias binding I decided to sew this on by machine so I'm attaching it to the front of the bag and then I will flip it to the back and hand stitch it in place. I really like using Clover Wonder Clips for this they're really great for holding the binding in place so you can stitch it by hand. So I'm using Wonderfill Invisifil to stitch the binding in place and I've chosen a blue colour which will just blend really nicely with the binding and also it won't show up too much on any of the fabrics really because it is so fine and like it says Invisifil. Once the binding is finished on both of the panels, it's time to put them together. So I decided right at the beginning that I was going to make two quilt sandwiches, bind them and then join them together with a ladder stitch. I really enjoy doing a ladder stitch and I really like the result that you get with it. I think if you were going to put heavy things in this bag then I would make it in a different way but I knew that I was going to probably use this for crochet projects nothing that really weighs much so this method of joining it together is absolutely fine for that purpose. Now when it comes to doing a ladder stitch what I tend to use now is a thicker heavier weight thread so I'm actually using the fruity that's what I had to hand even though this is a really beautiful decorative thread it's really strong and thick so it's great for doing a ladder stitch you can pull it and it's not going to snap 
and I just find that it works really well. magic of the ladder stitch is after you've made your little rungs you can pull the thread to close up the gap and I like to do that as I go around so I do a section of ladders and then I pull it and then I carry on stitching and I find doing it that way bit by bit you get a nice even finish. So once that was done, and I'll show you a little bit later, it was time to make the panels that attach the handles to the bag. So I measured the gap in the handle and I made sure that this piece of fabric was just an inch wider because I'm turning it over by half an inch each side. And you can see I've interfaced it with some iron-on interfacing to give it some extra strength. And the length of this piece is about six and a half inches. And that is so that I can thread it through and you'll see in a moment how it will attach to the bag. But I'm just going to fold over each side by half an inch and then top stitch it. So I folded the piece in half and this is because I wanted it to be really strong. It's going to get a bit of wear and tear with the handles and take the weight of the bag, even though it won't be very heavy, but I really wanted this to be nice and strong. So I folded it in half and then I attached it to the bag. So the nice folded edge is going on the outside and the other edges are going inside, but they'll still be hidden. I'm going to attach it by machine on the inside and then hand sew it to the outside of the bag. To make this step a lot easier I took the handle off and I attached it like this with a wonder clip and then stitched along there by machine and then I'll thread the handle on and flip it over and sew it to the front. But it's much easier to do the machine bit without the handle on. So here is the finished bag and I think it turned out quite nicely considering that everything is made from scraps which is really nice and it's perfect for my crochet project that's going to fit in really nicely. I have some lovely yarn by Lay Family Yarns to use and yes I'm really happy with it. I'm going to take it on a little break we're going on for a couple of days and hope to get some crochet done. So I really hope that you enjoyed watching this tutorial and that perhaps you'll give it a go yourself and make something similar. It's really nice to just sew scraps together and it didn't make as big a dent in my scrap pile as I'd hoped but it's better to use some than none at all isn't it? And I really like scrap fabric projects so I'm sure there'll be more on the horizon. Thank you so much for watching, thank you to everyone who's pressed the super thanks button and thank you so much to the wonderful patrons who are supporting this channel. It really means so much to me. Take care and I'll see you next time. Thank you. Bye bye.